The Republic P-47 Thunderbolt is a World War II era fighter aircraft produced by the American aerospace company Republic Aviation from 1941 to 1945. Its primary armament was eight 50 caliber machine guns and in the fighter-bomber ground attack role, it could carry 5-inch rockets or a bomb load of 2,500 pounds when fully loaded. The P-47 weighed up to 8 tons, making it one of the heaviest fighters of the war. The Thunderbolt was effective as a short to medium range escort fighter in high altitude air to air combat and ground attack in both the European and Pacific theatres. The P 47 was designed around the powerful Pratt and Whitney R2800 double WASP 18 cylinder radial, radial engine, which also powered two US Navy. U.S. Marine Corps fighters, the Grumman F-64 Hellcat, and the Volt Fu Corsair. The P-47 was one of the main United States Army Air Forces fighters of World War II, and also served with other Allied Air Forces, including those of France, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. Mexican and Brazilian squadrons fighting alongside the USAAF also flew the P-47. The armoured cockpit was relatively roomy and comfortable and the bubble canopy introduced on the P-47D offered good visibility. Named Nicknamed the Jug, owing to its appearance if stood on its nose, the P-47 was noted for its firepower as well as its ability to resist battle damage and remain airworthy. A present-day US ground, aircraft, ground attack aircraft, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, takes its name from the P-47. The P-47 Thunderbolt was designed by Alexander Cartvelli, a man of Georgian descent. It was to replace the Seversky P-35 developed earlier by a Russian immigrant named Alexander P. D. Seversky. Both had fled from their homeland in Georgia to escape the Bolsheviks. In 1939, Republic Aviation designed the AP-4 demonstrator powered by a Pratt & Whitney R1830 radial engine with a belly-mounted turbocharger. A small number of Republic P-43 Lancers were built, but Republic had been working on an improved P-44 rocket with a more powerful engine as well as on the AP-10 fighter design. The latter was a lightweight aircraft powered by the Allison V-1710 liquid-cooled V-12 engine and armed with two 50-inch Browning machine guns mounted in the nose and four Browning machine guns mounted in the wings. The United States Army Air Corps backed the project and gave it the designation XP-47. In the spring of 1940, Republic and the US Army Air Corps concluded that the XP-44 and the XP-47 were inferior to Luftwaffe fighters. Republic tried to improve the design, proposing the XP-47A, but this failed. Cartvelli then decided, uh, then designed a much larger fighter, which was offered to the U.S. Army Air Corps in June 1940. 
The Air Corps ordered a prototype in September as the XP-47B. The XP-47A, which had little in common with the new design, was abandoned. The XP-47B was of all-metal construction except for the fabric-covered tail control surfaces with elliptical wings with a straight leading edge that was slightly swept back. The air-conditioned cockpit was roomy and the pilot's seat was comfortable, like a lounge chair, as one pilot later put it. The canopy doors hinged upward. Main and auxiliary self-sealing fuel tanks were placed under the cockpit, giving a total fuel capacity of 305 U.S. gallons, 254 Imperial gallons. Power came from a Pratt and Whitney R2800 double WASP two row 18 cylinder radial engine, producing 2,000 horsepower. The same engine that would power the prototype Volt XFU fighter to just over 400 miles an hour in October 1940, with the double WASP on the XP-47B turning a four-bladed Curtis Electric constant speed propeller of 146 inches in diameter. The loss of the AP-4 prototype to an engine fire ended Cartvelli's experiments with tight-fitting cowlings, so the engine was placed in a broad cowling that opened at the front in a horse collar shaped to lips. The cowling admitted cool air for the engine, left and right air co uh, oil coolers, and the turbo supercharger intercooler system. The engine exhaust gases were routed into a pair of wastegate equipped pipes that run along each side of the cockpit to drive the turbo supercharger turbine at the bottom of the fuselage, about halfway between cockpit and tail. At full power, the pipes glow red and their forward ends and the turbine spun at 21,300 RPM. The complicated tur uh, turbo su supercharger system with its ductwork gave the XP-47B a deep fuselage and the wings had to mount it in a relatively high position. This was difficult since long-legged main landing gear struts were needed to provide ground clearance for the enormous propeller to reduce the size and weight of the undercarriage struts and so that the wing-mounted machine guns could be fitted each strut was fitted with a mechanism by which it te telescoped out nine inches while they were extended. The XP-47B was very heavy compared with, the, with contemporary single-engine fighters, with an empty weight of 9,900 pounds or 65% more than the YP-43. Cartvelli said it will be a dinosaur, but it will be a dinosaur with good proportions. The armament was 850 caliber light barrel Browning ANM2 machine guns, four in each wings. These guns were staggered to allow feeding from side by side ammunition boxes, each with 350 rounds. All eight guns gave the, fire a com uh, gave the fighter a combined rate of fire of approximately 100 rounds per second. The XP-47B first flew on the 6th of May 1941 with Lowry P. Brabham at the controls. Although there were minor problems such as the cop some cockpit smoke that turned out to be due to an oil drip, the aircraft proved impressive in its early trials. It was lost in an accident on the 8th of August 1942 but before that mishap, the prototype had achieved a level speed of 412 miles an hour at 25,800 feet altitude and had demonstrated a climb from sea level to 15,000 feet in five minutes. Though the XP-47B had its share of teething troubles, the newly reorganized United States Army Air Forces placed an order for the for 
171 production aircraft, the first being delivered in December 1941. By the end of 1942, P-47Cs were sent to England for combat operation. The initial Thunderbolt Flyers 56 fighter group was sent overseas to join the 8th Air Force. As the P-47 Thunderbolt worked up to operational status, it get, gained a nickname, the Jug because its profile was similar to that of a common milk jug of the time. Two fighter groups already stationed in England began introducing the jugs in January 1943. The Spitfire Flying 4th Fighter Group, a unit built around a core of experienced American pilots, had flown in the RAF Eagle squadrons prior to the US entry in the war, and the 78 fighter group formerly flying P-38 Lightnings. Beginning in January 1943, the Thunderbolt fighters were sent to join Army Air Force's civilian Millville Airport in Millville, New Jersey in order to train civilian and military pilots. The first P-47 combat mission took place 10th of March 1943, when the 4th Fighter Group took their aircraft on a fighter sweep over France. The mission was a failure due to radio malfunctions. All P-47s were refitted with British radios and missions resumed on the 8th of April. The first P-47 Seven air combat took place on the 15th of April with Major Don Blakesley of the 4th Fighter Group scoring the Thunderbolt's first air victory against a Fokker Wolf 190. By mid-1943, the Jug was also in service with the 12th Air Force in Italy and against the Japanese in the Pacific with the 348 fighter group flying missions out of Port Moresby, New Guinea. By 1944, the Thunderbolt was in combat with the US Army Air Force in all its operational theatres except Alaska. Luftwaffe ace Heinz Barr said that the P-47 could absorb an outstanding amount of lead from shooting at it and had to be handled very carefully. Although the North American P-51 Mustang replaced the P-47 in the long-range escort role in Europe, the Thunderbolt still ended the war with, with 3,752 air-to-air kills claimed in over 746,000 sorties of all types, at the cost of 3,499 P-47s to all causes in combat. By the end of the war, the 56th Fighter Group was the only 8th Air Force unit still flying the P-47 by preference instead of the P-51. The unit claimed 677 and a half air victories and 311 ground kills at the cost of 128 aircraft. Lieutenant Colonel Francis S. Gabreski scored 28 victories. Captain Robert S. Johnson scored 27 with one unconfirmed probable kill, leading to some giving his tally as 28. And the 56th Fighter Group Commanding Officer Colonel Hubert Zemk scored 17.75 kills. Despite being the sole remaining P-47 group in the 8th Air Force, the 56th Fighter Group remained its top scoring group in aerial victories throughout the war. With increases in fuel capacity as the type was refined, the range of escort missions over Europe steadily increased until the P-47 was able to accompany bombers in raids all the way to Germany. On the way back from the raids, pilots shot up ground targets of opportunity and also used belly shackles to carry bombs on short-range missions, which led to the realisation that the P-47 could perform a dual function on escort missions as a fighter-bomber. 
Even with its complicated supercharger system, its sturdy airframe and tough radial engine could absorb a lot of damage and still return home. The P-47 gradually became the US Army Air Force's primary fighter bomber by late 1943. Earlier versions of the P-47D, carrying 500-pound bombs underneath their bellies, mid-production versions of the P-47D could carry 1,000-pound bombs and M8 4.5-inch rockets under their wings or from the last version of the P-47D in 1945 high-velocity aircraft rockets. From D-Day until VE Day, Thunderbolt pilots claim to have destroyed 86,000 railway cars, 9,000 uh, railway engines, 6,000 armoured fighting vehicles and 68,000 trucks during Operation Cobra or Cobra. In the vicinity of Ronsi, P-47 Thunderbolts of the 405th Fighter Group destroyed a German column of 122 tanks, 259 other vehicles and 11 artillery pieces. With the end of World War II, orders for 5,934 were cancelled. The P-47 continued serving with the US Army Air Forces through 1947. The US Army Air Force Strategic Command from 1946 through 47, the active duty United States Air Force until 1945, and the National Guard until 1953, receiving the designation F-47 in 1948. P-47 served as spotters for rescue aircraft such as the OA-10 Catalina and Boeing B-17H. In 1950, P-47 Thunderbolts were used to suppress the Declaration of Independence in Puerto Rico by nationalists during the uh, Jayuya Uprising. The P-47 was not deployed to Korea for the Korean War. The North American P-51 Mustang was used by the U.S. Air Force mainly in the close support role, since the Mustang was more vulnerable to being shot down, and many were lost to anti-aircraft fire. Some former P-47 pilots suggested the more durable Thunderbolt should have been sent to Korea in the Mustang's place. However, the P-51D was available in greater numbers in the U.S. Air Force and the ANG inventories. Due to uh, continued post-war service with U.S. military and foreign operators, a number of P-47s have survived to this present day and a few are still flying. The Cuban Air Force took delivery of 29 ex-USAF airframes and spares. By the late 1950s, the P-47 was considered obsolete, but all were well suited for COIN tasks. Okay, thanks very much um, for listening and for watching, and until next time. Thank you.